it is easier building a refinery in uh, Asia or in the Middle East than building in Nigeria. Because in Nigeria, there's actually, or in Africa, there's no infrastructure. So when we are looking for cranes, we couldn't get cranes to even hire. When we are looking for rigs to do the piling, we ended up between stone columns and pilings that go up to about 35 meters. You are talking about a quarter of a million piles and stone columns. What does it take to build the largest oil refinery in Africa and the single largest single train refinery in the world? Africa is the world's second largest continent, resource rich, home to 1.4 plus billion people and rapidly urbanizing. At the heart of West Africa lies Nigeria, the continent's most populous nation, an oil giant that paradoxically imported most of its refined fuel for decades. The Dangote Petroleum Refinery is a $20 billion solution to a complex challenge featuring towering distillation units, hundreds of kilometers of piping, and tanks capable of holding billions of liters. However, behind the steel and concrete lies a human story that began a century ago in the markets of northern Nigeria. Aliku Dangote's story starts in Kano with his great-grandfather, Alhaji Alhassan Dantata, who built a trading empire in Kola notes and ground notes. His son Sanusi Dantata expanded into transportation and real estate. In 1977, Aliku moved to Lagos with a loan from his uncle, initially trading in sugar, salt, and cement. In the 1990s, he shifted from trading to industrialization, responding to Nigeria's struggling refineries and the nation's reliance on costly fuel imports by the 2010s. The vision is to establish a private facility producing 650,000 BPT of Euro fuels and integrated petrochemicals, large enough to meet Nigeria's demands and export the surplus. The leaky free zone provides deep water access ample space and the logistics needed to develop this mega project efficiently. The Dangote refinery transformed from coastal swamp to one of the largest industrial complexes on earth through a meticulous step-by-step -step process. Before any earthworks began, teams surveyed the land, constructed temporary access roads and established worker camps and storage yards. Every inch of the site was carefully mapped out before the first bulldozer touched the soil. The Lekki coastline was situated just above sea level. Dredgers pumped millions of cubic meters of sand from offshore to elevate and level the ground. But that level, finished level, required a hell of a lot of dredging to be done in this plant. So the world's biggest dredgers were here. And for about 18 months odd, the plant was leveled up. This is probably an exercise of its own kind. Following this, stability was ensured with thousands of reinforced concrete piles, some reaching depths of over 30 meters, anchoring the future refinery to solid bedrock. Major structures were prefabricated abroad and shipped in modular sections, pipe racks, columns, platforms, then bolted and welded on site. This reduced build time and improved quality control. The most dramatic stage installing the 3,000 ton regenerator and the 112 meter distillation column. These lifts push the limits of African construction, requiring custom built jetties, giant crawler cranes, and precision engineering. Nearly 900 kilometers of pipelines link each unit, transporting crude fuels, steam, and water. Each section was welded, X-ray tested, and insulated to allow for thermal expansion. A total of 177 tanks were built on reinforced concrete rings with their steel shells welded from the base up. Hydro testing ensured structural integrity before applying coatings and cathodic protection. Once the major construction work was finished, crews installed pumps, compressors, and cabling. The control system connected every sensor and valve to the central operations room. After flushing and pressure testing the systems, fire safety systems were activated and crude oil flowed through the system for the first time. By mid-2023, the skyline was complete, 
and the refinery was ready to change Nigeria's energy story. May 22, 2023, commissioning day. Early production focused on diesel and jet fuel. Gasoline followed as units met Euro fee specifications. By 2025, the refinery was running at hundreds of thousands of barrels per day, processing both Nigerian crude and imported WTI, with plans to switch entirely to local crude by year-end. Adjacent to the refinery, Africa's largest polypropylene plant began producing 830,000 tons per year, with exports secured under a deal with Vinma. The refinery's reach is continental. A new 1.6 million barrel storage facility in Wavis Bay, Namibia, will serve southern markets. In Nigeria, a fleet of 4,000 natural gas powered trucks is rolling out to deliver products directly, cutting costs and improving supply reliability. Analysts point out that ramping up mega projects takes several years, particularly for gasoline that must meet strict sulfur standards. There have also been discussions regarding land acquisition and environmental risks, issues that the company claims it is addressing through mitigation programs. The next significant milestone is to operate entirely on Nigerian crude oil, which will help retain more value within the country and secure supply chains for decades to come.